Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Regime Citicom video, we're going to be discussing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. Now, this video is going to be very AMD-centric, because we're going to be discussing Threadripper, specifically the fact that dummy dies are not actually a thing with Threadripper, despite uh, many claims to the contrary. And then we're going to move over to the Ryzen 5 APUs, specifically the 2500U, which sports an AMD Radeon Vega graphics card as well. So we're going to be starting things out, as I just mentioned, with Threadripper. Now, Threadripper has been a very, 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 very popular product for AMD. In fact, it was rather surprising that we learned that Threadripper wasn't actually intended. AMD actually didn't even have plans to add it to the roadmap until, well, pretty much this year, actually. In fact, it was almost like a side project. In fact, almost like isn't even the correct term. It was a side project for a number of um, employees at AMD. And then eventually they simply utilized, of course, the Epic technology along with Ryzen and tweaked things more for the customers. And well, there you go. We have a product which is certainly rivaling uh, Intel's best HEDT offerings. And it's a very impressive product. 16 cores, 32 threads. However, if you do the maths on that, each of these Ryzen dies contains two CCXs each. So, of course, that means you have, for the top-end uh, Threadripper, 16 cores, 32 threads, but theoretically the maximum configuration should be double that. So, of course, that means 32 cores, 64 threads. We're dealing with complex maths, don't you know? However, that's a bit weird, right? So, what's going on? Well, there were rumours that Originally, there were actually four Ryzen um, dies that were plonked on to the CPU. These were actually started off by DeBauer, who managed to get hold of a Threadripper processor. But that was quickly quashed, and AMD, along with others, said that no, essentially what you have here is a dummy die. It's basically just there. They're just there to, uh, I guess the best way of describing it would be to balance the heatsink, because obviously it's a pretty damn massive socket, that's putting it mildly. However, DeBauer has decided to come back to this topic, and I'll link his video below. The too long didn't read is that he essentially wrecked a $1,000 Threadripper 1950X. He deleted it, which obviously just means taking the top off, removed the dies themselves, so all of the four, and then essentially ground down the actual dies, each of the four, to get into the actual substrate itself. In other words, so we can actually see the core layout. It looks actually, okay, I, I admit I'm kind of geeky here, but it looks rather pretty. What happens? Well, yeah, you actually have, of course, each of these cores being legitimate. So it is actually a real processor. Now, there are a couple of questions. For example, does this mean that all of these are active and then disabled via BIOS. Probably not. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these are essentially disabled, as in like they're damaged or perhaps lasered, or perhaps uh, disabled at the factory or perhaps damaged during manufacturing. But in essence, there is a very good chance here that we could actually see the possibility anyway in the future of a 32 core configuration. There are only a few small issues with that. Well, the first is that obviously it would be a very expensive product. I, I don't know exactly how much, but I'm certainly going to say over $1,500, so at least 500 bucks more than what we currently have for the Threadripper 1950X. The second issue is that it would also eat into the single core Epic processor lineup, because obviously if you want 32 cores at 64 threads, you can pretty much say that there's a good chance that you're going to need an awful lot of processing power. Therefore, you might be a customer that would be more likely to buy into Epic. On the other hand, if you could simply go with a, well, Threadripper, there is a good chance that you may not end up in that ecosystem. So this would be an absolute phenomenal processor for individuals whom perhaps would like to go for uh, a virtual machine type of build, or perhaps a HPC, or whatever else. I also suspect, however, that we might see mm, interim numbers. For example, let's say in the future, AMD, and obviously we don't know the roadmap, it could be that this never comes to fruition, but in pos it's possible in Christmas time, or perhaps January, or whatever, 
AMD could say, hey, you know what, we're going to just have four additional cores because we are getting a lot of, uh, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but let's say that they have, uh, each of these dies has two CCXs and each of those, of course, CCXs has four cores. So we're getting some of these which only have four enabled. So you know what we'll do, we'll just make a 20 core part and that would be an easy way for them to do that. Or perhaps we could, in the very distant future, even just see a 24 core part. Or perhaps even the full FAT32. It's a very interesting uh, take on things. And this is assuming, of course, that the rest of the wiring on the motherboard and the BIOSes and everything else would actually take that. It's possible that it might require a BIOS update. It's possible that the rest of the motherboard slash packaging slash you know, socket slash whatever could not actually deal with this, but it is a very intriguing possibility. I do suspect Intel have probably started to reverse engineer this and have an idea of what competition they could face in the future. So for the rest of us, it's, well, just an intriguing possibility. However, if this is really a possibility that could, you know, impact the market, I have a feeling that Intel could be somewhat concerned. All right, folks, now we're going to be discussing AMD's Mandolin, that's M A N. D-O-L-I-N. So we have a couple of different results which have popped up as usual on the internet. One would be a Geekbench and the second one would be 3D Mark 11. We'll start out with Geekbench first. So this one's pretty interesting. Single core score is 35 at 61. This of course is with Geekbench 4 as I just mentioned 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, this is the tryout version for Windows with a multi-core score of 9421. This is actually a very impressive result to say the least. You can also see that cache and um, everything else is basically identical to what we'd come to expect, given the leaks and just plumb what we know about the actual processors themselves. So we have four megabytes of level three cache, 512 kilobytes of level two per core. So of course that's uh, two megabytes each, oh, sorry, two megabytes total rather, and level one and level uh, one instruction and data cache is 32 kilobytes and 64 kilobytes respectively. Obviously, this is a per score basis. So that's actually pretty damn impressive and does indeed compare fairly favorably actually to let's say the 76.6U. I'm sorry, the 76.6.0U when it comes to both a single and multi-thread. Finally, we'll quickly bring up the Ryzen 5 2500U. Now, once again, assuming these results are accurate and not fake and all that stuff, the performance is pretty good. We have a comparison against the 8550U, as well as, once again, the 7660U. Uh, Honestly, pretty damn good. Of course, we're looking at the physics score. Uh, graphics score could be important, I suppose, as well, since this is technically an APU. So about 3,800, uh, sorry, 3,655, uh, 30, 3,655 for the graphics score, which, as you would expect, is about double, slightly over double that of the 8550U, and mm, about a thousand less, slightly less than a thousand less than the 7660U. Uh, but obviously... There is a difference in the graphics cards in there, but the physics score is perhaps the most important because obviously this really relies on the uh, CPU itself. We have a result which is essentially identical between the two, at least within the margin of error. So the 8550U and the Ryzen 5 2500U are essentially within the same ballpark of one another. Uh, if we're talking pure CPU processing performance in physics with 3D Mark 11. However, both are well over a thousand points, about 1500, 1600 points faster than the 7660U, which makes an awful lot of sense once again, given the specifications. So what does all of that mean? Well, very simple. It looks like AMD once again have a fairly compelling product. Obviously for folks who want to buy like a high-end bleeding, uh, you know, desktop based system or something like that, then this is probably not gonna be particularly good news. But if you are shopping around for a mobile based uh, device, you know, laptop, that type of thing, then this could certainly be at least one additional option, which is never a bad thing. More options are always a good thing. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon, take care, bye for now.